Osteoarthritis actually describes the degenerative changes that affect our weight-bearing joints. So that's particularly the knees and the hips, but also into the ankles and even to a lesser extent the joints of the spine. And what we're really talking about is changes to the congruent surfaces, so changes to the cartilage or the surface of the bone themselves, uh, commonly used, uh, commonly termed wear and tear. And this in itself can cause painful symptoms and stiffness or even noises, so crepitus, so clicking and crunching noises. Uh, but it's also important to remember there's a very big second comp component of this, and that's the soft tissue changes. So the changes to the muscles, to the joint capsule, ligaments and tendons play a really major part in the, pa the painful symptoms and the reduction in function that people describe. Osteoarthritis has a very significant impact on people in, within the workplace. In fact, a research commissioned by Apos Therapy shows that sufferers, up to 63% of them, actually have to stop work altogether because of the symptoms. And, and that can be quite variable. Uh, if you speak to anyone, often people have a commute to and from work, uh, which walking to the train station or the tube station, for example, can be very, very uncomfortable. Uh, and also even sitting at the desk for long periods can cause high levels of stiffness and really quite a lot of pain within their affected joints. Yes, there were. There are actually uh, two, two aspects of information that were particularly interesting. The first one relates to that 63% of people that have had to actually give up work. Now, although that's a high number within itself, uh, I think what's quite amazing is the actual impact on the economy that has. And it's thought that up to £10 billion per year is lost through people having to take permanent retirement at an earlier age. And the second point really is more what I relate to when dealing with patients myself, and that is the, uh, the number of them up to 51% having to give up the recreational or hobby activities that they were previously able, able to do. With anything regarding our health, I think early intervention is always key. Uh, certainly the first port to call is usually the GP, and it's good to keep your GP informed of all changes to your uh, any symptoms that you may have. From there, the GP may decide to take things further, i.e. a referral on for possibly investigations, so an X-ray or an MRI scan, which can also indicate the, the, the level of, of joint change that you're suffering from. It's important to remember that what's shown on radiographs or what's shown on x-ray, it doesn't always have a direct correlation with painful symptoms, but what it can do is act as a baseline. So when somebody's symptoms first occur, then you can have a, something to compare to at a later date. There's actually a number of treatments available, and I get this question asked to me quite a lot, and I usually split it into two camps, if you like. Uh, the first side of it is considering the biomechanics. So with biomechanics, I'm talking about the forces that actually pass through the body or pass through the affected joints. Uh, and there's a couple of options here that, that can yield some quite good immediate results, and that may be through orthotics, so the inner soles that people often put into their footwear, uh, or even uh, a knee brace. So both of these have a direct effect on the mechanics, which can, as I say, ease symptoms quite quickly. However, they have fairly significant limitations in, in that they don't actually teach the body anything. So the minute they're removed or the minute they're taken off, painful symptoms can return very, very quickly. The other camp, if you like, is, is that of the, the neuromuscular component. So that's the relationship between your brain and the muscles that work all your bodies and control all your movements. As a physiotherapist, this is an area of expertise for me. And what we'd always try and do with these people is actually try and A, get some better strength within the muscles that support the joints, but also get better control. Now, this is the tricky one to really achieve. Better control around the joint will increase the joint stability. And it's widely regarded that joint stability has a direct uh, relationship with painful symptoms and also is thought to speed up the degenerative process. Like anything mechanical, it makes sense. An unstable joint is likely to wear out quicker. Apos therapy works uh, to actually combine both of these, which is quite unique within itself. Uh, the assessment for Apos therapy really takes into account movement patterns. So they use computerized gait or walking analysis, uh, and they do a full assessment of both the subjective history and of the objective markers, so looking at range of motion of joints, etc. Now, from that, they're able to actually use the, the foot-worn device, uh, which is a shoe-like uh, device, but has two pods on the bottom. 
and they have infinite ways of actually moving these and adjusting these. And the first one is to address the biomechanical factor. So by changing the position of these pods, they're actually able to change the forces that go through the body and effectively offload the joint. So they get a very immediate reduction in the patient's pain. The second component and where uh, the, the treatment really comes into its own is once the pain has started to reduce, a level of controllable instability is applied. Now, it's not something that you necessarily feel when you're walking around, but it's enough to stimulate the muscles to actually start working in the normal pattern again. It's very easy to do. So, so their patients actually only wear the system for a short period during the day. And during that time, they're actually able to carry on with everyday tasks, doing the washing up or even possibly in the workplace, you know, to and from the water cooler. So it's very easy to use. Uh, and the net effect is through continued use, daily use for a short period, the carryover into normal life increases. So that when the commute back to the train station, for example, where previously it became quite painful towards the end or when you got to the front door, is now far, far easier. So the functions increased and also the pain has reduced significantly. I'd actually recommend two websites. The first one is apostherapy.co.uk, so that's A-P-O-S therapy.co.uk, where people will actually be able to find out a little bit more of the patient experience and the treatment itself, but also importantly the clinical research and the research uh, that I've discussed previously which talks about the effect of osteoarthritis within the workplace. When looking for more support, actually, there's a charity-based uh, organisation called Arthritis Care, and their website's arthritiscare.org.uk, uh, and they offer support and, and, and a wider spectrum of information.